What is English literature? Where is it? And how is it there? How does it have its life? Which must be in the present or not at all. And I indicate here how troubling and urgent the questions are. For the industrial masses, their work has no human meaning in itself and offers no satisfying interest. They save their living for their leisure but don't know how to use it except in the bingo hall, filling pools forms, spending money, eating fish and chips in Spain. <laughs> Nothing but emptiness that has to be filled with drink, sex, eating, background music and what the papers and the telly supply. Until now, the word culture described the high-minded ideas of an academic elite. But in the 1950s, a new generation started looking at other areas of life, asking, couldn't the experiences of ordinary people be part of culture too? The first of these thinkers to break away from the old crowd came from the Black Mountains of Wales. Raymond Williams was a very unorthodox Cambridge Don. Born into a working class family in a tiny Welsh village, he was the first person in his family to go to university. An unusual background for a Cambridge academic, it was to give him a totally fresh perspective. Raymond's basic conviction was that the culture, to use his words, that he came from, was infinitely more profound and more sensitive and in, in, in a profound sense educated than the culture to which he went. And he never lo let go of that conviction. And for that reason, I think of him as a very noble person. He was a noble man. In Culture and Society, Raymond Williams delved into history, interrogating how the word culture had been controlled by the ruling classes for the last 200 years. Williams wanted to seize the word back from the elites. He said culture should mean a whole way of life, to include areas like his traditional Welsh background. He wants to say, culture comprises all sorts of other things. We can't reserve the word culture for this area of art and literature. We've got to see culture as something which arises from the practices of ordinary people, working class people, everyday people in their lives. What they produce, the views, the ideologies, the notions, the productions, uh, the arguments, everything there counts as culture. Williams joined forces with the BBC to make a film called Border Country. In it, he crossed the cultural borders between the two worlds of his home and his work. In Cambridge, he found more borders still between the life of the university and the people in the town. When I first came here, I used to walk out past these gates and walls, out of historic Cambridge and into another and very different Cambridge. You can feel almost at once the change in the atmosphere. A different feel, a different sound in the air. This again is crossing a border. If we'd come to Cambridge as a family, this is where we would have lived. Just back down there, down the road, is that enclosed, quiet world. Learning, yes, but also employing and owning. This is where people come from to work in the colleges. This is where the colleges are not teachers, but landlords. And it feels often like a place that is just used, a backyard. 
Hopefully I'm the only test speaker and today is fine there. Two days at least has come temporary opportuno. He even took the cameras behind the scenes at one of the colleges to interview staff about their day-to-day -day lives. The people who work in the colleges as waiters, porters, gardeners are still called servants. I find that very strange. It's a way of seeing people I never learned to share. They're always on the one. You know, get me this, get me the fresh buds and get me more greens. And Get me water, get me bread, get me, get me more cutlery. Sort of posh grads, they don't really want to know us, but the, the you know, the people, the, the scruffyish ones, not, don't, mean the, don't, mean, don't mean the long-haired ones, the scruffy ones that aren't got long hair, they sort of talk to us all right, but the, the, you know, sort of white-collared ones, they don't want to know, and these long-haired blokes, they don't want to know either. Just like we're there, you know, sort of slaves sort of people. The border country is everywhere. In so many places now, people are moving out and being moved from old settled ways into new ways, unprecedented ways, which have to be felt, recognized, understood, responded to, altered. Borders, I think, are meant to be crossed. Williams showed that there was culture beyond the academy.